In this session, I'm going to talk about charts. There are different types of charts that you can insert in a spreadsheet. And now we are moving on to the next tab here, primarily under the insert tab. And you can insert all kinds of stuff here under pictures, clip art, shapes, smart art and all. So if you look here under charts, you can insert column charts, line charts, pie charts, it gives you some samples here as to what you can do. The idea of charts, it's very simple. Basically, you can, let's say you have a bunch of data like this. And now you can take this data and you can basically create a chart out of it. So to create a chart, it's very simple. You select the data. So we have the day here and the amount. And then you click on insert and then you choose chart. Now the idea is that uh, and this is a tip here for you to remember is that if it's something that deals with percentages then you'd probably use a pie chart because that's going to go against a hundred percent. If it's something that it's like the stock market or data like this in this spreadsheet that I have at this point or worksheet here, then you probably want to use a line chart to see how things are fluctuating. Column charts fall somewhere in between there. So um, in this case, probably the most suitable chart would be this one on the line chart. So again, we just choose amount here and we select the two columns that we want and then we click on insert and then line chart. We pick the type of line chart for now is just go simple. So we click on line chart and there it is. It's drawn out. The chart has been automatically created. Now notice when you create the chart here, it also gives you these contextual tools. So you can change the type of the design here. You can also change the type of the layout. You can format the chart a different way and things of that nature. Under the layout, notice that you have the chart title, chart title where you want to put the axis and all that type of stuff, vertical axis and so on, the legend where you want to display the legend and so on, and things of that nature. So it's going to be a matter of playing with it and checking it out and testing it. So now, why would you use a chart, you'd say? Well, you probably want to figure out what's happening or what's changing in your business. So to check this out a little bit further or better, what we need to identify here is go back and then probably sort these by date because notice they are not sorted correctly at this point. So I'm going to delete the chart. And then the first thing we're going to do is sort this by date. And that's where the sorting uh, comes handy. So we click on sort by oldest to newest. And then we select the two columns again. And we create the chart all over again. Click on insert, line chart. And it's going to look very similar to before. However, you're going to notice here that 4.2 through 4.9, there was a low point and it seems to be here as we make this bigger. There are certain points that are lowest and if you notice there is like a sequence. So by simply using this, uh, using this chart and looking at this chart, you can identify probably where the spots are or what, where the problems are or what days of the week probably you could offer, for example, coupons or some kind of a promotion or something, do something about it. And so in this way, you're using a chart to identify your business and make business decisions. Here's another type of chart. This is probably where you could use a column chart. So we have different categories of items. And you have those items that are sold in stores. They are sold over the website. And then they are also sold through mail order. So what you can do in this case is you can select only the data that it's valuable to you. And then you go under insert. And then you choose column chart. Under column chart, you can pick any of those three dimensional and so on. But for now, let's keep it simple. Click on the, the first one. 
and that's a representation of your data so that's a representation of your column chart now you could go in here under the design tools and modify this further this chart further by for example clicking on the chart layout and you could have the numbers displayed and you could have um, the uh, legend in the bottom and so on so you have all kinds of layouts and designs here if you go under the layout again you can format uh, different components like uh, the axis you can format uh, these guys here like if you double click on it you can have it so it shows up in a fixed format and the units for example they could be in thousands instead of having seven thousand uh, seventy thousand with all the zeros you could just make it look like that and it shows you that it's in thousands so you basically have the flexibility by using the layout to modify the legend and all the different other components in this chart but this is an example of the column chart here as far as formatting you could go ahead and format this with different colors and different other designs as well another type of chart and this is where you could put different types of charts actually so let's say you have sales here and the years so in this case probably a column chart would be a good one to utilize so we have the data we click on insert choose column chart and then that's a representation of that data so that's the first one it's a column chart now if I deleted that and I made that a pie chart to just display here that some types of charts are not very useful notice this uh, pretty much useless in this case that's why I say that you need to utilize the right chart here for example the line chart would probably be useful as well so if I choose this first one it shows how the business through the years is improving or not improving so line chart or the column chart now the other one here for example quarter one quarter two quarter three you could have it that would probably work because it's part of a whole part of a hundred percent um you could use here a, a column chart notice if you do not select the data first then it doesn't work right so the column chart in our case actually works best in that so again you need to experiment with it and see what works best and what doesn't work best this would probably be best for either line chart so you could try line chart and that's how they work or the column chart the column chart this is actually the best one because you're comparing each quarter the revenue versus expenses and it's more visual so the idea of using charts is that it's more visual you need to use what makes things more visual or brings out the point that you're trying to make more clearer to the reader or the viewer or the audience so you play with it the concept here is select the data choose insert choose the type of the type and then customize a chart with all the different options here that are available <music>if statement in Excel or conditional formatting in Excel there will be times in Excel where you want the computer to look at specific data or analyze specific data and uh, make a decision or uh, meet a criteria and post that criteria there for you let's say we have the employees and we say the condition is 20,000 you have to have sales of 20,000 for that week in order to get a bonus for $750 so you want to have the computer go through that and analyze it now this is with five employees so that's fairly easy but if you have a lot of employees or a lot of customers then you could utilize that feature solving that problem for you so in this case we could say if the bonus for example it would, instead of saying true or false we'll say deserves bonus or no bonus now in this case what you would do is that we're using a formula you can have the computer post here whether they deserve a bonus or not deserve a bonus and the way it works is that you go here under formulas 
And then notice there are different types of formulas that you can utilize here. There are financial formulas, logical formulas, text, date, time, and uh, math, and so on. So like we mentioned earlier, there are hundreds of those functions that you can utilize. We're going to utilize the logical functions. So we're going to use if, for example. You can either use it from here, or you can go under the insert function. So you could go under the insert function. Most likely, it's not going to show up like this right in front of you so if you do not see what you're looking for you can simply type it and then click on go then it will give you a brief explanation how that function works and if you need more help you can click on it and it will give you examples of how the function works because for the sake of this course we're not going to be able to explain every single function in excel would be taking years of studying excel so we'll click on OK here, we'll choose the IF function, click OK, and then it's saying it wants to know the logical text. So what we do here again is we go under the IF statement, and then we choose the condition. So the condition in this case will be if this value, if Barbara's sales were greater or equal to the criteria, then, so if they are greater or equal, we want the computer to tell us that she deserves a bonus. If it's not equal or greater, then we want the computer to tell us no bonus for you. And then we click OK. So notice uh, Barbara here, she deserves a bonus because it's higher than 20,000. Now if we use the autofill feature, notice that it did not work in this case. And the reason why it did not work is because, notice what happens here. Remember the absolute values? We are referencing B12. And B12, as we move down, it becomes B15 and all that type of stuff. So it keeps on moving down on us. So we want to lock this value. So we go back to the first formula here and we change B12, that reference, by pressing F4 to an absolute value. So we hit enter. Now, autofill this again, and notice deserves bonus, doesn't deserve bonus, and so on. So let's do it with bonus yes or no. So we go again under insert function, if statement, click OK. Then we say if the sales were greater or equal to the criteria, then we want the computer to type yes. Now, notice here that since this 20,000, it's going to be a non-changing reference, we need to make that an absolute value by pressing F4. And then we want to have no for the next one. Then we click OK, and notice she deserves a bonus. And if we scroll down, we have similarly the same thing. Now, what about if we wanted to add the bonus that she gets? We do it again using an if statement, we insert function if and then we choose again the value then greater than equal whatever the condition the condition we make it absolute so by pressing f4 or putting the two dollar signs right there and right there and then if it's true then she gets the 750 dollars and you can make that as an absolute value because we don't want that value to change if she did not exceed $20,000 in sales, then she gets nothing. And then you just click OK. And notice she got $750 and the rest didn't, or some of them did not. So you can use this, if, for example, if you have a long sheet and uh, of customers and you want to do promotions, you could say they deserve a promotion or not and how much of a promotion. And then you can do a mail merge for your customers that deserve the promotion. That's the if statement. It's a very powerful feature. It's simple to use once you get the hang of it. And the easiest is you can either use it by typing all this stuff here and notice the differences, or you can utilize it, which I'd recommend by using the insert function and then going through this. In this brief video, I'm going to cover one of the Excel functions, that of using formulas to post values across worksheets in Excel. 
The process is the same for pretty much any type of spreadsheet software. In my case, I'm using Excel 2010. So in our scenario, let's say that we have multiple worksheets and we are going to keep track of expenses for each month in these worksheets. Now, in one of those worksheets, we want, for example, in here in the very beginning, we want to keep track uh, and have a summary of all the expenses from each one of those worksheets, individual ones. So the question is, how can we bring, for example, the totals, for example, for the training expenses from January that we'll have them posted here, how can we bring that total back to the training summary sheet? And the same, for example, go under computer expenses for January, go through February, March, and all the other months. So the concept is pretty simple. So let's say that we have a value here in, the, in cell I5. Let's say we have a value of 40. Now, if we want on J8 to replicate this value, then what we do is three very simple things. We press equal and then we put the reference. So in our case, I'm going to click here on the reference, I5, and then I hit enter. So notice it was the equal sign, clicking on the actual reference, and then we hit enter. So notice number 40 now is replicated. If I change this to 50 and hit enter, notice that value will be replicated. So the idea is, how can we take an expense or a number from another worksheet and post that total in a different worksheet of the same spreadsheet? So here's what we need to do. So we go under January, for example, and we put under training, for example, put Excel and so on. So now here on the very top, we're going to put the total for training. And this uh, is, assumes that you have done this beforehand. So now the total here we calculated just in case you don't know. We put the equal sign, then sum, open parentheses, and then we just choose the whole range for training. So we can pick also predefine the whole range here because we might put more stuff in there. Notice it's now 150. Now let's say we did also PowerPoint and that let's say it was $100. So now notice it's 250 the total for this. By the way, this total, you could have done it also using a formula here by choosing the sum function. But personally, I prefer to use it the manual way, equal, then a function, and then the range. So now if we go here under office supplies, we do, let's say, pencils, $100, and so on. Of course, that's a lot of money for just paper clips. Now we get the total here for office supplies. And if we wanted to do that, um, notice I can do it also using the, the function here. This is the automated way. And notice the reason why I don't like the automated way is because it puts or it picks things on its own that may not be correct. So what we need to do is we need to pick this other range down here. But notice the concept, it's pretty much the same. And then let's say we got also uh, software. Okay, so we have um, the training expenses, they total to 250, and then office supplies to 270. Now, if you go to February as well, you could have additional expenses here as well. Okay, we get the total here. We have, let's suppose that we have for March, April, and so on, we get the idea, I assume. And now we want to go under the cross uh, sheet calculations or our summary worksheet here. And let's say under January, we want to post the total that is under the January worksheet right here, this number. We want to post it on the summary one. So what we do is, remember the concept from the beginning, in order to replicate 50 here, we just do equal, then the reference to that cell and then we hit an enter. Same thing here. We do the equal sign. We switch to the worksheet that we want to get a, a reference. And then we click on the 
cell that we want to grab the value from, hit enter, and notice it's posted. So three steps again. We do equal where we want to start at the location. Then we go on the other worksheet where we want to get the total. Just click on that cell and then number three hit enter. So it's very simple. So if I go to February as well, get the training expenses for February, we go under that worksheet. Actually, we put the equal sign first, then we go to the worksheet, we go to the cell, and then select it and hit enter. Now the nice thing about this is that if I go, for example, to my January expenses for training, and for some reason I add more expenses to it, so let's say I add another expense here, 50 to 275 here. Now notice under my summary worksheet, that has been posted automatically. So this is an easy way to utilize formulas to get values from various cells in different worksheets and have those values posted on a summary sheet to keep track of expenses to keep track of values and so on. So hopefully it's helpful and uh, beneficial for you. Welcome back to Excel. In this session I'm going to cover how to transfer data or to link an Excel file with Microsoft Word. Suppose you want to create a report and this report is going to be pulling data from an Excel spreadsheet. What you can do is that you can pull a specific part of your Excel spreadsheet into a Word report by simply following this procedure. There are a couple ways to do this and most people what they do probably is let's say they have a report so we go into Microsoft Word here and we go into Open Word and let's say this is my report. What happens is that a lot of times users they simply go into Excel and they copy part of those cells so simply by copying and then they go back into Word and then they simply paste it. Notice when you paste it it doesn't look too terrible but yet it doesn't look exactly how it was in Excel. Now how about if you have a report once a month and you want to pull data constantly from a spreadsheet that your assistant is keeping track of. In that way, instead of you having to copy and paste stuff, you can actually link that report so that it pulls the data in real time. And here's how you do it. So you go under Excel where your report is and you select the data that you want to link to Microsoft Word. You copy the data very similar to just like how you copy anything and then you go back into Word. So you could minimize Excel, go back to Word. Now instead of simply pasting it like we usually do by pressing paste or right click and choose paste, what you do is you click on this drop down in Word under paste and then choose paste special. Under paste special you want to paste it as a link to your Excel files. So you're going to paste link and then choose Excel worksheet. Then click OK. At this point notice that the data has been updated. Notice it looks actually different from what you're copying and pasting that you did earlier. It actually looks nicer. Plus anything that you change from this point on in Excel it's going to be updated automatically. And notice how it happens. Note, take note here that for training it is at this point $788. If I close this Word document and save it and now I go back into Excel and change my training expenses to $1,500. Save this. Now Let's assume that the assistant did this and they closed it and they and now you're going back into Word to run your report. What you'd do is you'd click on File, open your monthly report, however you get to it, 
And notice it asks you that this document contains links that may refer to other files. Do you want to update the document with the data from these linked files? Do you want to update basically the data from your Excel file? So you'd say yes. And then notice that down here, linked from Excel, that value has been updated to $1,500 like before. So it's a pretty neat feature. It's a very powerful feature to utilize linking something to your Excel live data file. Now this does not work if you email your file to somebody else though. So basically your Excel file and your Word file need to be in the same location where you had it initially. And if you were to send it to somebody else, you could actually print this or save this in PDF format and then send it to them and they'd have the report that they probably asked for. In this session, I'm going to cover a little bit printing and the viewing and the setting of the print area of the document and also inserting comments in a document. So let's suppose that you are going to, let's say for training or for expenses, you wanted to put some notes. Or let's say that you are uh, putting down uh, different values for a specific customer and you want to put notes particularly for that specific customer and that cell. So what you can do is for any cells you can insert comments. So you go under review and then you choose comment and then you add comments. So you could have something like this. So notice whenever you put comments it just puts a red mark as you hover the mouse over that cell it shows those comments. So that comes in very handy. They will not print by default, however you can choose to print them as you need them. One of the things here under the view in the bottom, under page layout, you can look at it and this is how, if you were to print it out right now, this is how it will print by simply clicking on this icon right here. So as you are in, in page layout here, notice that you can change the heading. You can go also and insert stuff on the footer. And under the footer, you can go under the design tab here under contextual tools and you can insert for example the, the page number or date and time and all that type of stuff. Now once you are ready to print it you can go under file and then choose print. Notice a preview will be displayed as you try to print the document. Now there will be times where you want to change the margins or you change something right before you print it because in the print preview it does not look that good. So what you can do is notice it's hidden kind of here in the very bottom right. You click on this show margins and you can customize this layout so it prints a different way for you. So let's say we want that a little bit wider and so on. So you can adjust it, either shrink it or adjust it to make it bigger or smaller depending on what your needs are. Let's return back home here and go under the home, the normal tab here. There will be times, and I'll show you here at this point, how you can set the print area. Sometimes there will be large areas, like uh, because the spreadsheet can contain up to a million records and 16,000 columns, and you don't want to print all of that stuff. So sometimes you want to print only a certain section of it. Let's say you want to print only this portion of it. So to print only a specific portion of it, what you have to do is you have to go under the page layout and then choose the set print area. Set print area, drop down here and then click on set print area. At this point, when you go to press print and then print again, notice only that portion will print out. If you do not want this area anymore to be printed, but you want something else, you can go to the page layout, then choose the set print area, and then clear it. Once you clear it, then you can select a different area to be printed. Select it, set print area, and then go under file, and then choose print, and notice only that portion will print out. So this is a different concept on the setting of the print area in Excel different from Microsoft Word or other applications.
will be cases where you have a large spreadsheet very similar to this where it goes into hundreds and hundreds and even thousands and thousands of records so this for example goes to 34,000 records and notice as you go down and scroll up or down here and left and right you will lose the first heading here as far as the what the fields are there will be also other cases where you have the different clients for example here in this case i have just have a log but you could have names of customers that you want to see so what you can do is there are a couple ways to do this uh, you can what's called freezing one of those panes so you click on here under view and then you go under freeze panes and then choose in this case we'll freeze the top row click on freeze top row and notice the top row at this point stays put and it stays always there and available for us other times there might be cases where you are scrolling up and you want for example this first it could be the name of the student or it could be the name of the customer or something like that that you want that to be static but as you scroll to the right you want to be able to see both the headings and also the first column so the way you do that is by going to the, to the top of the spreadsheet here and then on the second cell for example in b2 here because we want this section alone and we want to leave this section alone so we want to start right here and then what you do is you click on it you choose on view and then choose on freeze panes and you want to first unfreeze them then click on freeze panes again and then you want to actually simply click on freeze panes again because now we didn't choose the top row notice it's choosing the top row and the first column as well so now if we scroll down it still moves down but yet if we scroll to the right it leaves the records here on the left it leaves them alone as we scroll to the right so it's a nice feature to know about it and to utilize it if you have large spreadsheets with a lot of records and you want to be basically be able to navigate just leave the customers in the top row alone and then navigate the rest of them so so far we have tinkered with a lot of other features in microsoft excel here things like in, in the home tab and formatting and inserting basic formulas and so on then under the insert tab we learned a little bit about inserting charts and a couple of the things here then on the page layout that you can format the margins and orientation and so on you're familiar with that and then we did some of the functions and like i said it's going to be impossible to go through everything that is available here so now at this point i'm going to uh, want to cover here a little bit about data um, excel it's a powerful tool that it can interact and this is the concept that i want you to keep in mind that if you can use excel to pull data in from all kinds of other systems out there so let's say you wanted to pull data from microsoft access so you click on microsoft access and we'll cover microsoft access and databases at some other point but most companies they use some kind of uh, database very similar to microsoft access so in this case we'll go to this location and let's say um, this is our database Usually databases, as you, you learn later, it has customers, it has other all kinds of records. So let's say we want the customer table in this case and download it to or drop it into Excel. So we click OK or import it to Excel. We click OK again. And these are all the customers that we pulled for that from that specific database. Other things that you can do with data here is that you can import data from the web. So this would be, for example, going to a web page here and if that web page has specific data fields such as the dow jones for example notice it'll have a little arrow you can click on it and then click on import and it'll import that data it'll pull it from the web from that specific page into excel another way to do this is to import data from a text file or what's called a comma separated file 
CSV file, which is the most common file format for moving data from one system to another. Uh, so let's say I go here to sheet number three and then I go under from text. Now I go to a place that I have some kind of text file, let's say it's customer, double click on customer. Now you'd have to know whether the data is delimited or fixed width. So let's say it's delimited. We'll figure this out when we get into access and the data stuff and it's tab delimited or comma delimited. So if you remember a moment ago, I said comma separated file. So usually the records are separated by a comma. Notice now as soon as I chose comma, they are separated in these columns. I click on next and then finish and then click OK. And now notice that data has been imported from a text file. You could also get the data from other sources, like you could connect to a Microsoft SQL Server. This is what a lot of the companies and businesses use out there. So it's a live system. For example, here at Cairn, it could be a Power Campus or it could be the self-service system and so on. So you're connecting to that specific server. This is a more complicated setup to do, but it's possible to pull the data in real time from that live system. Or you could use existing connections as well. The existing connections that could come in handy, for example, for pulling data from like stock quotes and things of that nature from online. So let's say we want to use the MSN money investor stock quotes. We click on it and then we want to put it in an existing spreadsheet. Let's say starting with B2, we click OK here and now it wants to know what symbols we want to enter there for different companies. For example, it could be Microsoft. I think Microsoft, it's MSFT. And it's going to pull the data, the stock as of this point, as I'm typing this for Microsoft. So for example, the last trade was at $27.95 and the high was $27.98 and the volume and all that type of stuff. You can insert multiple records here. So you can insert multiple records here. For example, let's say under existing connections, you wanted the stock quotes and we want, let's say Microsoft, we separate them by commas. Let's say we want Google. So you'd have to know what these fields are. Let's say we want Apple and so on. You could add and you can use this value to refresh for future ref refreshes. So every time you open this Excel spreadsheet, it will give you the latest and you can use this for your personal investments. You can use it for something that you're studying. So you can click OK here and notice now it's going to pull all of those and give you the data for each one of those. By the way, notice the Google at this point is at $801.20. You can click on chart here and uh, it will bring a chart and all that type of stuff. Keep in mind that you can interface Excel with all kinds of other systems out there. As you get to be business professionals, you can use this feature, ask for a comma separated file, and you'll be able to bring that data into Excel and then use all the knowledge that you have gained from this course, for example, by sorting, data sorting and creating charts and all that type of stuff directly from Excel. And don't forget that you can do also mail merges using an Excel file in conjunction with Microsoft Word. That would be an, a mail merge. And then in conjunction with Outlook, you can do an email merge where you send emails out to your customers. <music>As we have discussed earlier, there are different types of functions. There are hundreds of them. Uh, there are some financial ones that you can use and as business students, you could probably utilize in the future. Notice it's a lot of them. And if you click on any of those, it'll tell you what it does and how it is used. Now on how it is used, some of those are pretty complex. So you could use this help function right here or you could also search over here under the Microsoft Excel help. But let's assume that we want to calculate the mortgage payments. A couple of things that you can do, like you can calculate the payment itself on a loan. You can calculate the interest that you are paying for that loan. And then you can also calculate the principal payment for that specific loan. And this is just to give you an example of how it works and a 
just to understand the concept. So for example, we have the interest rate at 6%, and then there are 12 payments for that every year for that payment. So let's say that our loan is going to be, let's say it's a car loan, and you get a car loan for $20,000. So that will be PV, and then uh, basically you have the interest rate at 6%, and then also when you get a loan, it's going to tell you how many uh, years you're going to pay that loan. So for example, it's going to be five years. Now five years, I have it here, the number of payments. The number of payments is basically the number of payments per year, it's 12. Five years times 12 is 60. So this 60 here comes from B4, this number right here, 12 months times the number of years, and that gives us a number of payments. So if we look on the PMT function in Excel, that basically it needs the rate, the rate which is per month, then it needs the number of payments and PER, which will be 60 months, and we are calculating that with the formula here, of course, and then it wants also the PV, the present value of your loan. So now, we want to calculate down here what your monthly payment will be for this car, this nice... So well, the way it works is that you click on insert function, and then you find the function for PMT. So you kind of have to know what that is, somehow you have to search it and so on. So you click OK here, and you click on rate. Notice the rate is the monthly rate. So 6% divided by 12 here, it would be this rate per month. So the, uh, the rate here would be B5. Then NPER, the number of payments is this one, B7, equals 60 in this case. And then the PV is the present value which comes to, which we have picked a loan of $20,000. So now all you have to do is you click on OK here, and notice if you're getting a loan for a car for $20,000 at 6% rate, you have to pay for 5 years or 60 months $386.66. Now, let's say you have good credit for $20,000 for 5%. Now, notice what will happen to your payment. You hit enter. From 386, you have to pay only 377 a month. Now, what about if you had to, let's say, 8%? Notice you have to pay $405 every month. So that's the payment per month. Now, what about if we want to calculate the interest that you're paying every month for your, or the interest payment? So what we do here, we use the same formula or the same setup we go uh, to this next cell, and then we go under Insert Function, and we look for IPMT. And there it is. Double click on it, and then we want to know the rate. Well, this is our rate, because it's calculated based on our interest rate. So actually that was not happy with me because I clicked OK too early. And then the PER, it wants to know the PER is a period for which you want to find the interest. So the period, the period in this case, it would be, for example, for one period, for one month, that we want to find this payment, interest payment. We could change this to see it for 60 months if we want it. Then we want the number of the NPER, so that would be the number of payments. In this case, it's 60 and then the present value it's 20,000. So again, what we are doing here, we're just looking at these values and then just putting the references for each one of them except for the number of payments. Now we click on OK, and basically what we are doing in the, in the first payment, we are paying $133 in interest. Now, think about it this way. If you're buying a $300,000 house, for example, in Langhorne, that's what um, houses go for, and you're getting a loan for $300,000, and you're paying 8% interest rate, now, of course, this comes in to be very expensive because, you see, this is only for five years. 
usually the uh, mortgages are for 30 years so you hit enter there so at 8% if you have bad credit a $300,000 house without any additional taxes or anything it's gonna be two thousand two hundred and one dollars now your interest on that first payment for three hundred thousand dollars it's gonna be two thousand dollars and you're paying basically the principal only two hundred dollars actually two hundred and one dollars now if you have good credit and this is where it comes in handy if you have let's say you get an interest rate of four percent notice that it will go the payment will go from twenty two hundred I change it to four percent it goes to fourteen hundred dollars and that's why the interest rate and your credit score is important and notice that on that first month's interest payment it's going to be only a thousand dollars rather than two thousand dollars so if you wanted to get something let's say for two hundred thousand dollars house this will be your payment nine hundred fifty four dollars and that will be your interest payment on the first month now if you wanted say the payment on let's say for 30 years it's gonna be 320 and 360 payments because they are 30 times 12 it's 360 let's say on the fifth payment how much you're gonna be paying for interest so let's say five and now it's 829 it's less than the first uh, month now it's 829 first month it was 833 so you're kind of getting it less now let's calculate the principal payments so the principal and notice it is uh, ppmt it's the rate the uh, number and then number of payments and then the present value so we go here under insert function we choose ppmt click OK and then the rate it's this one which we can change it at any point per we let's say the first payment then we want the NPER that's that one the basic number of payments present value is the loan and then click OK so basically all you have to do here is notice that IPMT the interest payment it's these values as we defined earlier and the, for the PPMT all you have to do is use the same formula but just change the function to PPMT so notice PPMT B51 so for payment number one and then seven is the number of payments per year and then eight is that so basically what it's saying here is that the first payment for your mortgage of two hundred thousand dollars it's gonna be only of two hundred and forty dollars if you had the more uh, at five percent if that was at eight percent then it would be this much only hundred thirty four dollars now so basically that's some of the concepts in financial calculations and financial functions here that's lots of them and you could google this stuff you could check them out for yourselves either if, either from the help menu over here or as you're inserting the functions depending on what you're trying to do unfortunately we will not be able to learn all of these things in this class in this session I'm going to just uh, briefly cover pivot tables we're not going to go too much in depth with them but I just want to make sure that I mention them and that you are somewhat acquainted with using them let's say that we have here some data in an Excel workbook here pivot tables are fast and powerful way to analyze data so basically you can summarize it it's also used in business intelligence on determining and making decisions and things of that nature so what it allows you to do is to look at data from all kinds of different angles and sort through it and manipulate it in all kinds of different ways so the way it works is that you select the data and then what you do is you click on insert and then you choose pivot table so you choose pivot table on the drop down here and then you can create what's a new worksheet at this point you click OK and now it's going to build your table depending on how you filter and how you sort things out here for example 
So let's say I want the recruiter here. Notice all the recruiters are posted. Now let's say that I want to see the contract. And notice they have a contract, yes or no. Let's say I don't want the contract there, but I want that as one of the filters. So I leave that alone as a filter. Now I go, let's say, under the start date. Notice it gives me the date, then the job number and the location. So notice it's organized in this way by name of the person, the location, and so on. But suppose that I don't want it that way, it doesn't meet my needs for one reason or another. You can simply change that. So let's say we don't want the date here. We want to put the date on the very top as the first, actually not the date, but the location. Now notice it's uh, summarizing and resorting the data based on that location. So we have Portland, San Francisco, and so on. Now you have also FTE, yes or no. So you could use these. Now notice up here, under contracts, you could have yes or no. So you have these drop downs. So you click on yes, and you want to see only the yes contracts. And now you have the locations, you have the names of the persons, you have the dates, and so then you can go back here and add additional fields, like the salary level. And notice the salary level, it goes for 75 and so on. Now the salary level, you could uh, go over here and put the salary level as one of your filters. So notice now that I chose this as a filter, I could go and say, I want the salary level to only 55. And then click OK, and now it lists me only the people that meet that criteria, but that yet the layout is depending on what you're looking for. So again, basically you just have to tinker with the data here and notice as you move things around, then this data gets displayed in a variety of different other ways. So let's say I wanted to date now first. Now notice it's sorted a different way. So it's a very powerful way of looking at things and analyzing data from all kinds of different angles and it's a matter of actually playing with it. So, so again, it's powerful. Try it for yourself if you have data at some point that you are analyzing and looking at it from all kinds of ways.